Hello, I'm Greg Jarrett. You're in the strategy room. President-elect Donald Trump and House Speaker Paul Ryan didn't really see eye-to-eye -eye during the presidential election. But could Trump's win secure Ryan another year as House Speaker? And what will this mean for Donald Trump as he's set to take office in January? T joining me now to talk about it with reaction, Democratic strategist David Mercer, Republican strategist Brad Blakeman. Welcome to you both. Thanks. So, Brad, um, is Ryan a, a shoe-in, and was it also a smart move for President-elect Trump to pick Ryan Priebus as his chief of staff? He's close to Ryan. Yeah, well, let's take Rance Priebus first. Excellent choice. He's a Washington uh, insider uh, who is going to assist an outsider clean up the town. And you have to know how Washington works. He's a tremendous manager. He uh, did wonders at the RNC in bringing it up to date into the modern era with not only uh, staffing, but with equipment and uh, new technologies. Um, so I think Rance was the perfect choice. Now, his buddy, who's the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, uh, I think it's up to his caucus whether he remains, but I'll tell you this, I'm hearing very good things about the relationship uh, that Donald Trump is having with the president-elect, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that Rance Priebus is the best friend of the Speaker of the House, and I think he'll become a very good friend of the president because they have such common interests of passing legislation. That's right. So, if anything, I think it's going to be a very symbiotic relationship between the West Wing and, uh, and Capitol Hill, something we haven't seen in generations. All right, let's turn now to the guy who has an absolutely perfect record in picking, picking presidents, uh, David Mercer. You're 0 for 4, <laughs> aren't you, David? That's a perfect record. <laughs> uh, I am, but uh, as a Democrat, uh, I uh, also have two presidents that, that were elected twice, uh, setting history, being the first two since Franklin Delano Roosevelt to do it. So we have wins and we have losses, and we move on and uh, in hopes that the country right. uh, stays on track. Is this, David, going to be a pretty solid relationship, Ryan, Trump, that the Democrats are going to fear? Uh, I don't think Democrats will fear. Uh, as, as far as really, the they're not going to unwind uh, uh, President Obama's key policies. Uh, well, we've seen already some adjustments in the rhetoric uh, from Donald Trump himself uh, with regard to Obamacare uh, and absolute repeal. Uh, he is backing away from that. Uh, we see it on issues. Oh, come on, he's going to gut it, except for the two most popular provisions. I mean, who are you kidding, David? Well, you know, that's, that's also after 60-some-odd repeal votes, uh, which did nothing yeah, for Republicans. Are or now. Well, they're different. And because they are different, and now he's an elected uh, president-elect, it's different than what his rhetoric uh, and promises that he'll keep. He said he's going to clean the swamp, um, you know, uh, of lobbyists and whatever. Look at his transition. He's got a lot of lobbyists on hand, right. and we'll see a lot of lobbyists uh, appointed. So we've got to see the actions and where they go, uh, either in line with with his promises or uh, counter to his promises. Yeah. All right, David, I'll let you lick your wounds there for a <laughs> moment and try to recover while I turn back to Brad. Now, Brad, um, <clears throat> is Trump the beneficiary of the hard work by Ryan and others who've provided uh, a real template for changing Obamacare, not to mention reducing taxes? No doubt. Uh, look, Obamacare reminds me of the Aesop fable of the tortoise and the hare. Republicans were the tortoise. They were constantly, you know, trying to put bills before to repeal and mocked by Democrats. They'll never do it. And guess what? Who won the race? The tortoise won. And Donald Trump yeah. now has the opportunity to benefit from the hard work that's come before him. But the, Not only were they anti-Obamacare, the, yeah. but they have a template but I guess now. The point Greg and Brad. Exactly. The Greg point and I'm Brad, trying we to make is people criticize Trump for saying, well, you don't have an alternative plan. Yeah, he does. Yeah, it's Ryan's do. plan. Right. That's yeah, correct. And what, what, what is Ryan's plan? It was hardly discussed during the campaign uh, that the Republicans had an alternative. You know why? Because the Republicans don't no, nobody have an was, alternative. Nobody was they listening. Not, we had, you guys can bothered, argue amongst yourselves. No, I'll have, no. Let if you they have bothered that. to go show back. Show me the plan. And, Next time we're here on Tuesday, you know what? show me right, the plan. you got to lay out the plan. Okay. Go <laughs> online and, and Google Ryan's plan to replace Obamacare. And you know what? You're not going to have enough time 
during yeah, the and it was a great part of a, a Trump's substantive bill. platform. It was a great part of Trump's platform in winning uh, the election. It was. I hardly heard People him were say thinking it. about Obamacare this time <laughs> when I got my notice in the mail saying it's going up. Uh, by 10 percent, you know Look, what? We had, this wake debate, up call to we had this debate when Obamacare was getting passed or it was going for yeah. a vote. It's now history. It's now on the books. It's yeah. now Obamacare. Is soon so be history. you guys missed on that talking but, about predictions. But, but history can be reversed. You, and Brad, I'll let you have the last well. say. Was <laughs> it a mistake? Now, in retrospect, for President <clears throat> Obama to push through Obamacare without a single Republican vote. Be, you know what you uh, reap, you sow, and vice versa. Is That's that right. what you? Yeah, he, I mean, he put all his marbles down on on something that was hyper partisan, and it was based on lies. You don't have to take my word for it. The architect said he's banking on a stupid population in order to jam this through, and that's what they got. All right, David and uh, Brad, thank you both. Thanks. For complete coverage of politics, stay <coughs> here on FoxNews.com. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for watching.